with crocheting like any other thing any other craft we can get to any other hobby we can get into just basically anything that we can get into it can have some emotional roller coasters attached to it so in crochet especially with the holidays coming up this is something that becomes something really evident we get really excited right we want to make this for my mom and this for my sister and this for my other sister and this for my brother and this for my son and this for my daughter and this for my husband and oh i like that i wonder maybe i'll make that for me one of these days one of these days right um so what happens is we've got a lot of excitement and we get into these things and these things can sometimes turn into like bigger than we thought they were projects or life just suddenly things are really busy and so now stress starts to come in and get involved. And that's just if we stay at one level of the roller coaster. We can get into other levels of the roller coaster. What if you've put too much pressure on yourself that you've got to have all of this done by a certain date? Or one more level of this, you have finished the project. You have poured yourself into this with so much joy because you just know that they're going to love this. And then you get the reaction that you weren't expecting. They may still appreciate it, but it wasn't with the, the fanfare that that much work like could have equaled. <laughs> and what do you do then? Yeah, guys. Just like any other emotional things that take place. Emotions are incredible gifts, okay? But they're our signposts. They're not our destination. They're not our vehicle. They're not supposed to be what's in charge. So just taking a moment, what parts are within our control? So I, I, I am one of those that I get totally excited about this idea and that idea and this idea and this idea. And I'm also one of those people that like... I need to work on this one and then I need a break from it. And I'm going to go work on this one and then I need a break from it. And I'll come back or I'll do this one. Um, it's just how I'm wired. Okay. So know who you are, know what works great for you, but throw in a lot of grace there. Go ahead and take care of yourself emotionally. You can get really burned out if you're making things for everybody else. Oh my goodness. I love that hat. Could you make me one too? Oh, I've been seeing that you've been making those hats. They're so great. Could I have one too, but could it be this color? Right. And you're, you love making them, but suddenly what you did as, as a joyful project for one person turned into 20 things that are sitting on your to-do list. And you're just kind of like, I don't want to make that hat no more. <laughs> okay. All of this is just a practice of being aware and how are you going to manage the different aspects? One of the incredible ways to actually manage all of this is going to sound silly, but hang in here with me. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself first. And I don't mean in a self-centered, nasty, icky way, but if your child had just created a painting for you and you know that they've put a lot of effort and time into it and they were being intentional and they brought you something what words would you use to to tell them how much you love what they made for you and that they made it for you and when you would lavish that kind of praise on them you can lavish that kind of praise on you Here's one way to think about it. I have this cup. To fill this cup up, right? I'm working on a project and I am expecting this much and then this much and then this much because I've been putting part of me into this. My time, my effort, right? I've been learning things. I've been overcoming things. And so when we create something, it holds that much weight, volume inside of us and so what happens when we hand somebody something it's a container okay it's a container of expectation you hand them this container of expectation and they give to you but it it only filled up that much so now you were gift you gifted you gave they received 
and you have this much void and that leaves something hurting in your heart and it's not because they did something wrong it's not because of anything bad it's while we were working and everything we poured into it whether we intentionally did it or not that's just the way it goes when you do something and give effort it builds expectation this is why a lot of disappointments come because you have a container of expectation. And I don't want you to quit having a container of expectation that kind of turns into something really nasty of like, I don't know the words, okay, but just this concept of I will I will give and 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 give until I just can't give no more. And that leaves you empty, hurting and not okay. Building containers of expectations are good. What's not good is what we're expecting outside sources to reaffirm all of our hard work. When we can look at our container of expectation, we can look at this and we can understand why we have this because there was. Wow, I sat down and conquered that flipping stitch that was giving me nightmares. I finally understand how to do that oh my goodness I had to undo 15 rows because I messed up on the count but I have finally got that down oh I'm done with this project but I really need to make it and I really want to make it let's just stay in there perseverance endurance okay I have overcome all of that and now I have to learn how to how to do things I haven't yet done and that's connect you know, so attach this piece to that piece and what in the world did this person mean in this pattern? But I'm sticking with it and I've overcome it. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm almost done. Da, da, da. You know why you have a container of expectation. You have a container of expectation because you are the one that poured yourself into it. So what happens if instead of me handing you an empty cup and, and asking for you to fill it up, when, when you actually have no comprehension, even if you crochet, what if you have no comprehension that that stitch was giving me nightmares legit and that I had to undo 15 rows, right? And even if I told you, you didn't experience it yourself, you might have empathy for me. But regardless, regardless, what if along the way, I just like, wow, let me just breathe and take that in. I learned how to do a triple crochet and it doesn't look like a mess and i made five of them and they all are almost consistently the same good enough right <laughs> i can just enjoy what i did see there's there's nothing wrong in that i just enjoyed what i did <sighs> okay i had to undo 15 rows but you know what you know what okay fine <laughs> i undid 15 rows I figured out where the stitch was that I was having a mess up with. It only took three tries, but <laughs> look, look, it's done. And I may be silly for like five minutes in my craft room and they're wondering in there, what is mom doing? But who cares? I'm going to rejoice. Ha ha, I got it. Yeah, that was great. Look what I did. <laughs> and I'm just going to be silly and celebrate it because now my cup of expectation is already getting filled along the way. And if you can just do that, when you hand this off to somebody, that gift that you made them, the cup of expectation is already com almost completely full. And when they give you appreciation, your cup is overflowing. <laughs> your cup is overflowing. And, and you weren't looking for the outside world to fill up anything inside of you so that when they did, it was overflowing. That's what I mean by taking care of yourself emotionally. Okay. When anything we do in life, how we raise our children, how we love others, how we interact. And it always comes with a cup of expectation. If we can learn to fill up our own cups of expectation along the way, 
And then because your children pick up so much, what if the world around you, your husband, your children, begin to pick up on this little habit? We could see a lot of different things.